Rocket League has a lot of problems right now. Complaints about teammates, lag, queue times, the spike power-up and kickoff luck seem endless. They're all aspects of the game that push us to stop playing at one time or another. But which is the worst? Or is there a bigger idea that we need to consider that can explain why player numbers are dropping left, right and centre? After six years of playing Rocket League, I've been around to witness the game evolve, the emergence of RLCS and the discovery of every new mechanic. However, lately we've seen player numbers returning to where they were before the game went free to play. All that money, promotion and hype surrounding the game around September last year is gone and I think it's time that we really take a step back and consider what's contributing to this. Of course, those things I mentioned earlier all play their role, but from a broader perspective, the biggest problem in Rocket League right now is clearly player retention. That is to say, how many players stick around? How often do existing players actually join a match? How many years is a brand new player likely to continue playing, and what factors are contributing to this? Hence, in this video, I'm going to dive into all the reasons that I think the game is struggling to attract new players and keep existing ones, with the goal to spark discussion and bring attention to the things that I believe need to be changed, fixed, updated or improved. I'd love to hear your feedback and opinion on all the points I discuss, so be sure to comment and share your ideas too at any point while you're watching. Let's start with the Rocket Pass, the repetitive update that consistently seems to get some hype on its day of release and then never again as everyone realises there's no way they'll use a single item from the pass and bounce right back to their stock tank with Cristiano wheels. The challenges are incredibly underwhelming. Either there's something that's not actually a challenge, like getting 25 shots on goal or a total of 5000 match XP, or just annoying like having to beat MVP in 5 extra mode matches which can actually take a long time in OCE due to the small player base. I recognise it's difficult to make challenges in this game, but as an idea, how about taking some of the popular workshop maps, such as Lethemir's Rings Training, and making it part of the core game, where challenges are released based on speed or completion of a map like that. It encourages people to play, but will have the side effect of actually helping players improve their skill. Next, something needs to be done about these season rewards. I've received the items without exception since Season 1 in 2015. The only ones I can say I've ever used for more than two matches are the free-to-play Season 1 decals. Those were nice. But to be honest, the items are not my biggest concern. Instead, I'd be focused on the titles that are awarded. The Grand Champion titles and XP titles used to mean something. Nowadays, I come across Diamond players who boast Supersonic Legend tournament winner tags. So many people have coloured titles, and every Rocket Pass brings even more title choices. I'm pretty sure I have something like 50 titles to choose from. Maybe it's just me, but I loved the exclusivity of titles. When someone had one, you knew it was legit. Excluding Season 3 GC, obviously. Can get to the Grand Champion quite easily nowadays. Let me know what you guys think on this one in the comments. Leading on from that, I have an issue with the MMR thresholds not varying by region. I've played the game for thousands of hours, and last year while streaming, I played an average of 5-6 to six hours every night for nearly the whole year, and I still couldn't get the MMR required for Supersonic Legend. Maybe I'm just bad, right? The problem is, it's pretty much impossible to get here without being a pro, whereas in other regions it would be expected that someone with the same hours as me should easily be able to achieve it. I feel like the best of the best in every region should be battling it out for RLCS or tournament titles. And then the next caliber of player, those who have dedicated thousands of hours but are not wanting to play in a professionally competitive manner, have the chance to obtain the next best, a Supersonic Legend title. But that's not how it feels right now. And I think adjusting the MMR thresholds per region, depending on player numbers, would help with that. The servers. I think we can all relate on an almost daily basis to times when we're sure we hit the ball, but it seems to glitch through our car, and sometimes even the replay looks a bit odd. Every time it happens, it's just frustrating. And I understand that our own connection and setup matters, but with my limited knowledge of how this works, I'm pretty sure upgrading the technology on their end wouldn't hurt. When you can't even play the game as expected, it's a real motivation beater. Something I haven't seen discussed by other content creators lately is ranked punishments. I'm talking about when players leave ranked matches, throw the game, or sit AFK. 
Perhaps I'm just unlucky, but it seems to me that the number of people who will start to throw the game on purpose, scoring own goals, bumping teammates repetitively, has increased over the last few years. Right now, these are the ban times. That means I can leave three matches in a row and only get a 20 minute ban? More importantly than that though, is my reports on so-called unsportsmanlike players. I don't know anyone who's got banned for doing it, I've never got a notification in game saying that someone has been banned, and I continue to get those same players on my team. Something needs to be done about that, but at the very least give some information when a player has been banned to indicate something is happening and the reports don't go unattended. Although I've never been much into it myself, the trading scene has clearly died off. The introduction of the item store, being unable to trade these items, and the removal of crates has taken out the excitement a lot of people previously had. Mac, I'm just gonna use it for the episode! Yes! We did it, YouTube! I don't see them changing this as it's the model they use in other games, but it is one reason I've bought very few items in the store. I'm not keen to spend $20 on a car I'll barely use and never be able to sell or trade. Every time Counter-Strike introduces a new group of items, the whole Steam market crashes due to the number of excited players keen to get their hands on them. That simply doesn't happen to any substantial level in this game, at least not anymore. I also wanted to touch on the competitive esports side of things. For this part, I'm going to draw a lot of comparisons to CSGO broadcasts since it's the only other game that I've spent a lot of time watching. Even if you don't play or watch CSGO, I'll try to be succinct. For me, watching Rocket League for extended periods of time is hard. There's just not enough variation or interaction with the stream available. When I watch a CSGO match, I can see the grenades, the weapons, the economy, and the positioning of players, and then imagine what I would do, make predictions on how the game will play out, and pick up tips based on their positioning, crosshair placement, and tactics. Meanwhile, the only info a Rocket League stream gives on individual players is their boost amount. The game is happening so fast, I can't predict when a player will challenge, go for a certain type of save, or make a pass more than a second ahead of time, since that's the way the game works. All of the maps are the same gameplay-wise, and it's difficult for an average player to watch a match and be able to replicate tactics, positioning, or mechanics straight away. I think that's part of the problem. I never really watched high-level Rocket League as a way to improve, because such a big part of being a top-level player is simply dedicating the time to learn advanced mechanics, become more consistent, and develop synergy with teammates. They're not tangible things that are easy to take into your own matches immediately, unlike in CSGO where a player of any level can see how someone positions themselves to throw a smoke grenade, a flashbang, and then how they can open up sections of a map individually without the need for teammates. Hence, I'll happily watch a 5 hour CSGO series, but can barely stay interested enough for a 10 minute Rocket League game. I'm curious to see what possible solutions or ideas other people have, as I've struggled to come up with ways to improve this experience. I won't go into detail on these ones for time purposes, but smurfs, queue times, matchmaking variability where players will verse opponents hundreds of MMR different to their own, and of course the lack of workshop accessibility for console players are all other issues we need to address. If we could see better, more thorough attempts to rectify or implement these features by Psyonix and Epic Games, I believe Rocket League could be better than ever. Removing the game from Steam, which seems to have about 75% of the market share right now, also cut a huge chunk of the potential player base. The lack of videos this year clearly shows I've been struggling to find the motivation to produce Rocket League content lately, among other reasons. But Rocket League simply lacks variation, and I know it's a tricky problem to solve. There's no quick fix but I hope discussion can continue to occur and there are ideas already out there on how it can be improved. To list just a few, Wayton suggested the ability to record custom training packs so that instead of the ball just taking a single trajectory, it can mimic game situations with a car actually dribbling the ball. Honestly, I think it's a great idea. He also suggested, alongside many others like Thanovic, to introduce a creative mode that allows people to develop their own ideas. Pretty much the sort of thing Lethemir has been putting countless hours into on his own and making it accessible to everyone. Verge thinks Psyonix should work to implement Baki's mod as a core feature of training, and I agree. It's so useful, and it would reward the hard work of Baki's and that team themselves. I didn't want this video to come across as entirely negative. I don't think Rocket League is dying. In fact, due to how unique it is, I believe it will be around for a while. 
It's got a committed core player base that have played for years and will continue to regardless of how these issues are tackled since they have a genuine passion for the base game. I encourage everyone to take a look at some of the videos I'll link below from other creators on the subject and please leave a comment below with your feedback, whether you agree or not with the points I've made. It's a great game, I only want it to be even better. Thank <laughs> you.